The word Rabb in Arabic, if you look at the, uh, the linguistic origin, has several implications in it. But the first and primary of them is, you know, uh, absolute owner. Absolute owner. Like a, even a slave owner or the owner of a house. For example, Rabbu Abdin, Rabb, the master of a slave. Or Rabbul Bayt. Rabbul Bayt meaning the owner of a house. But it's not just any kind of owner. Because you know, another word, of, word for ownership is Malik. So you could also say Malikul Bayt, the owner of a house. So then the question is, how is the ownership of the word Rabb different from the ownership of Malik? That's the one thing I want to bring to your attention first. Actually, ownership is only one part of the many meanings of the word Rabb. While Malik exclusively means owner, Rabb includes the meaning of Malik, but includes other things too. So what are these other things? Rabb wal Malik, wal Sayyid, wal Murabbi, wal Murshid, wal Qayyim, wal Mun'im. Several things are included inside the word Rabb. Now let's look at all of them. I know I've discussed this before, but we need this review for this lesson, inshaAllah ta'ala. Rabb wal I just said he's owner. But then I said was Sayyid, who has the complete authority also. The one who's completed, completely in charge. Is it possible you own something, but you're not completely in charge of it? Like your car, right? You're, you're, you own it. But you have to get it inspected, you have to get it registered, you can't take it at any speed you want, you can't modify it any way you want. You have ownership, but it's limited ownership because it doesn't come with full authority. A Rabb is someone who has ownership and at the same time also has authority. He could do whatever he wants with it. He wants to burn it, he can burn it. He wants to tear it apart, he can tear it apart. Right? There's no one to ask any questions because he has complete authority. So Al-Malik was Sayyid. Then wal murabbi this is a very interesting and powerful word. You know, some people get confused about root origins of words because of a lack of knowledge of sarf. Surah Al-Isra. Allah says, وَقُرْ رَبِّ الْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ رَبَّيَانِ Right? He says, Master, Rabb, irhamhuma. Show mercy to both of them, meaning both of my parents. كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ Now what word did you just hear? Rabb. In Rabbayani. So some people start thinking Rabbayani here, the root letters, the origin is also Rabb. Because it sounds like Rabb, Rabbayani. But this is actually, a, it, this is not, uh, the, the fi'il here isn't, uh, what do you call it, mudaaf. It's not Ra, Ba, Ba. It's actually Ra, Ba, and Wow. Rabba, Yurabbi, Tarbiya. Tarbiya. The, the last letter in the root is not Ba, it's Wow. Now, what difference does it make? When you say Rabba, Rabb with Ra, Ba, Ba, if that's the root origin, those are the meanings we're discussing. But if you say Rabba, so Rabba and Wow, then the meaning is different. That meaning Tarbiya, you know, you ever heard Tarbiya? Tarbiya is to ensure the growth and maturity of something until it reaches the stage that you want it to reach. Tarbiya of a plant would be you taking care of that plant, you're watering it, it's getting enough sun until it matures into a tree and starts bearing fruit. Tarbiya of a child is you're giving them proper manners, you're taking care of their diets, etc. So from physical point of view and a psychological and social point of view, they mature into a healthy, sound, decent human being. This is Tarbiya al awlad right? So, but now the, the thing I wanted, so there are two separate roots. But Rabba, that root, Tarbiya, is included inside Rabb. They're not the same, but one is a subset of the other. In other words, when we say Rabb, when we call Allah Azza wa Jal Rabb, Part of that meaning is murabbi, the one who ensures growth. It's not the only meaning, but it's part of that meaning. So they're not the same. By the way, Imam Raghib al-Asfahani rahimahullah put them under the same category because there's one theory in classical Arabic where a root, if root letters are, are the last two letters, the ayn and lam letter are the same, or there's a naqis version. Like you have shaq, sheen, qaf, qaf, and there's another root, sheen, qaf, wow. Right? If that happens, then they can be considered similar or the same. There's one theory like that in Arabic. It's not a universally accepted theory. But Imam Raghib was inclined towards it. So he put Rabb and Rabba or Rabba, Yurabbi, Tarbiya in, under the same category. Not to say that they're the same, but they are related. And the relationship is Rabb is the superset and Rabba is the subset. Now let's get to the point itself. The owner, the authority, the one who takes care of. That murabbi would mean the one who takes care of. Like your parents took care of you when you were small. So Allah says, كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي سَغِيرًا Right? Now the thing is, is it possible you own something and you have authority of it, but you don't take care of it? Is that possible? It happens all the time. Look at your backyard. Look at the car you haven't done an oil change for for two years. Right? Look at, look at the computer who you, you, know, you haven't cleaned out the cash or whatever. And it's just piling on and you get the blue screen of death every now and then. A lack of tarbiyah, <laughs> lack of taking care. 
Now these, now Allah is described, the word Rabb includes the one who owns it, has authority of it, and takes care of it. Wal-Murabbi. Then Wal-Murshid, sets it in the right direction, uses it properly, guides it too, that's part of Rabb. You know, uses it for proper usage, that's part of Rabb. And then Wal-Mun'im, grants gifts. He gives, he's the one who gives gifts. In other words, the one, if, if Allah is Rabb to us, He doesn't owe us anything. Anything He gives us will be considered a gift. It's not something he's obligated to give us at all. It's considered a gift. That's part of the meaning of Rabb. Then Wal Qayyim, and finally the word Al Qayyim, Al Qayyim implies the one, he's the one ensuring the existence of the subject. Right? So if we're subjects to Allah Azza wa Jal, then the only reason we exist is he allows us to exist. If you want to take a worldly parallel, Walillahi al Mathalul A'la, but just to help you understand the point, if, if you're taking care of a really delicate plant, and if you stop taking care of it for like one day, it would die. Right? Or half an hour, it would just die. The only reason it's surviving is constant care. You are the reason for its continual existence. This is Qayyim. Allah Azza wa Jal calls himself al Qayyim and it's embedded in the meaning of Rabb. This is the word Rabb here. The word Rabb is really important for several reasons. One of them is it's the first name Allah used to introduce himself to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is also the first name Allah used for himself before he even used Allah when he introduced himself to Musa Alaihi Salaam. When Allah introduced himself to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he said, Iqra bismi Rabbik. Rabb. The word Allah did not occur in the passage. Rabb did. Musa alayhi salam goes up on the mountain. Ya Musa, inni ana rabbuk fakhla'na alayk. Innaka bil wadil muqaddasi tuwa. Wa ana akhtartuka fastami' li ma yuha innani ana Allah. Allah came later, Rabb came first. 